And welcome back to the Cincinnati Reds franchise mode here on MLB The Show 24, getting underway here in the 2025 regular season. And look at this, the Cincinnati Reds 7-0, 8-0, 9-0 to start the season as they finally lose the game to who else? The reigning National League champs in the Chicago Cubs. But what a start to this 2025 season for the Reds. They will start things off with a record of 11 wins and three losses after they lose this game here against the Toronto Blue Jays. But here we are for the series finale on Sunday between the 11-3 Cincinnati Reds and the 9-5 Toronto Blue Jays. Again, what a start the Reds have had so far, and you can credit that some to the pitching success of Hunter Green. He has not given up a run so far in 25 innings pitched and three starts. Insane start for Hunter Green, and the length he's been willing to go in three different starts. It is crazy. So shout out to him and the Reds again as a whole have been balling to start off this 2025 regular season. The pitching is much improved. The bats are doing well as well. Again, this is just a somewhat young team that will continue to develop over time. And we're gonna see a left-handed pitcher today in you say Kikuchi, 4.35 ERA so far this season. And TJ Friedel gonna start things off by ripping one into the gap. Perfect, perfect for the Reds left fielder. He's looking for three, maybe. Oh, he'll go back to second and he'll be in with a double. Oh, wait, never mind. The third baseman and Isaiah Kiner for left will overthrow the bag at second. So somehow Friedel ends up at third. They actually give him a triple somehow. I don't know how, but he's on third with a triple, and Matt McClain follows through. Doesn't matter if it's a double or a triple anymore, because Matt McClain follows up that extra base knock by TJ Friedel with a deep shot in the left field. His first of the season it took him 15 games, but Matt McClain finally goes deep here in the sixth to nothing Cincinnati to start this game off just like that. And you kind of thought matchup wise, this is a pretty good matchup for the Reds against Kikuchi because of the lefty. And just cause his overall is not that high either. And this is a guy who absolutely lives on beating left-handed pitching, Spencer Steer. All the way up to the four spot here against left-handed pitching in 2025, Spencer Steer hits the second of the season, opposite field in the right, 368 feet. And just like that, the Reds have taken a three nothing lead. I haven't even talked about the rest of the lineup so far tonight. There is Christian Encarnacion Strand who strikes out on a slider. He's in the lineup today against the lefty. Now, Levy Marte is obviously always in the lineup, but the other addition will be in the nine spot and Estuary Ruiz. Ruiz gets to bat against lefties, the former Oakland Athletic. Nick Lodolo has been good this season, man. 2.7 ERA, crazy start for him, especially after, you know, the struggles he saw last season. Lodolo is doing really well to start off this year. And really, again, everyone's been doing pretty solid. The only guy, surprisingly, who has struggled in the rotation is Andrew Abbott. I messed up this pitch, so don't look at my pinpoint on that one. Bichette gets on with the walk as Dalton Varsho comes in, and he'll strike out on a slurve away. But yeah, everyone really in the pitching staff has been doing well for the Reds with the exceptions of Andrew Abbott, but I think he will smooth things over as we get going in the season. And surprisingly, I mean, maybe not surprisingly, considering he had a horrible season with the Pirates last season, Araldis Chapman. He's got like a nine ERA. I mean, his ERA last season was seven. Hopefully again, both Chapman and Abbott can figure things out. Tyler Stevenson right there picks up a one out double. And now Ruiz is gonna hit one in the left field. Will they send Stevenson? We will. Rounding third base, Tyler Stevenson's in there. And Estuary Ruiz, obviously with the speed, gets to second. 4 nothing Cincinnati. Ruiz now looking to swipe third, and he will. Got to get used to that here with the Reds and the new speed coming from Estery Ruiz and TJ Friedel. It's that easy. Just got to put the ball in play and it will score Ruiz from third. Five, nothing now the score for Cincinnati. And we're just in the second inning. Here comes Matt McClain on the 3-2 pitch. And oh, okay, that one is going to get by the third baseman and Isaiah Kiner for Leffa. Just something to note for the Blue Jays as I, I messed up the steal attempt. Yeah, we're going to get picked off off of first base. But Vladimir Guerrero Jr., no, no longer on it. Uh, Toronto. We mentioned in the last episode, Josh Bell no longer on the Marlins. Well, Bell is here in Toronto. I guess he is their replacement for Vlad. I'm not completely sure where Guerrero ended up. But yeah, just something to note. The face of the franchise, I would say, for the Blue Jays, no longer here. George Springer is still around, though, and he will pick up the first hit of the night for Toronto as he will get one in the left field. Springer's on with a one-out single for Spencer Horowitz. 
the first baseman and yet to see a hit so far in this 2025 season will pop out in the foul grounds to Novelli Marte. Here comes Jamer Candelario. He struck out in his first AB and Candelario will do it again. Here comes Spencer Steer. Perfect, perfect rip. Oh man, right to Bo Bichette. You can't get more unlucky than that one as Christian Encarnacion Strand though, gonna hit one to Bichette and Bichette's gonna mess it up. I think they're gonna call that a hit for Encarnacion, I believe. Um, as Novelli Marte, or Novelli Marte, excuse me, will fly out into right field, ending the inning. To the bottom of the third, Kavon Biggio still here for Toronto. I mean, they still have a lot of the core pieces, right? Kiermaier's here still. I mean, I wouldn't call him a core piece, but he's still on this team, right? Bichette, obviously, Varsho, Springer, and Biggio are all their main guys. It's just, again, this team has a glaring hole, I would say, in Vladimir Guerrero Jr. not being here anymore. Kiermaier is going to get on with the two-out single, bringing to the plate Bo Bichette after Kiermaier's stolen base. Bichette, though, going to take strike three, looking on the slurve. So Nick Lodolo, five shutout innings. You couldn't have asked for a better start to the season and to this game. Again, Lodolo trying to prove why he should be in this rotation long term, because really, this is a prove-it year for Lodolo. If things don't work... I think we're going to have to look at him in a trade, especially with the guys that we have coming up. Obviously, we've got Rhett Lauder, the pitcher out of Wake Forest, who was picked in the draft a couple years ago for the Reds, and last year's second overall pick in Martin Valenzuela. Again, spots in this rotation are eventually going to need to be filled. Obviously, we can move those guys to the pen if needed in both Lauder and Valenzuela, but again, it's not easy sailing for any of these guys in this rotation. Like you gotta be on your A game if you do wanna stay on this squad. As Lodolo, again, after giving up a double to Josh Bell, will get Alejandro Kirk, another member, I guess, of the core unit for this Blue Jays team. And George Springer will follow by flying out into left field. So still four shutout innings for Lodolo. Kikuchi's day is over. They'll move to Chris Bassett out the pen. Kind of make the case for why isn't Chris Bassett starting because you say has struggled for the Blue Jays this season. Chris Bassett out of the bullpen has an ERA of 1.28. And we'll see how Bassett pitches in comparison to the Blue Jays starter tonight. But so far, Bassett with two outs and make that three, I do believe, as there is a sliding play at first base by Spencer Horowitz, putting away Jamer Candelario. Bassett gets through his first inning of work with no runs given up or any hits given up as well. Lodolo back on the mound, though, for the bottom of the fifth. He will get Horowitz. Kevin Biggio now going to put one on the ground right to Spencer Steer. Again, I keep forgetting to switch Steer and McLean. I think we'd be better suited off with Steer in the outfield and McLean in the infield, but it is what it is. Steer does a serviceable job in the infield as he'll get another player right there putting away, um, I believe, Isaiah kind of falefa on that pop out. And speak of the man, he is here at the plate. Steer, though, going to fly out into center. Here comes Christian Encarnacion Strand, too. I'm just trying to figure out in this game. I just... Encarnacion's stats just aren't the best. They, I don't think they replicate real life that much. I get as a base player coming into the 2024 season, but the problem is Encarnacion just does not develop at all, and that's kind of a problem. So we start off the bottom of the sixth with Kevin Kiermeyer lining one into right field. The Blue Jays with the leadoff runner on. Bo Bichette now gonna hit one past the diving glove of Novelli Marte. First and second, no outs for Dalton Varsho. Varsho hits one into center field. Three straight hits for the Jays, and that's gonna score a run. Five to one, and Lodolo's day is done. In comes the secret weapon, Mason Miller. He's only pitched one inning so far this season, but Miller, watch him in real life. He is gross for the Oakland Athletics. Hoping for some good production out of him here with the Reds. Got him in that trade with Ruiz, obviously. He'll get a pop out, and now Alejandro Kirk going to pop, or just, I mean, it's technically a ground out, and Stevenson is going to fire a third. I mean, it's a little blooper, but Stevenson will get the force out at third base, and there's the nasty slider by Mason Miller. He unloads with that velocity and hits you with that gross slider with a lot of movement as well. Again, I'm telling you, that guy is going to be a very good reliever for a very long time in this league, not just in this game, but in real life too. I really think so. He's the best guy maybe the A's have on their entire team as, you know, as an all-around player. Tyler Stevenson, though, going to start off the top of the seventh by getting a double into right field. Here comes Esther Ruiz and Chris Bassett gonna get him on that curveball. Two gone for TJ Friedel. Full county rips one in the right field. That ball is gonna get through. Will they send Stevenson to the plate? They will. Here comes the throw by George Springer way offline. And the Reds go up six to one thanks to that RBI single by Esther Ruiz. Matt McLean gonna try to add on, but he will fly out into center. But still, the Reds get that one run back. Our new score is six to one. And time for Aroldis Chapman to figure things out. The ERA is seven, not nine, like I thought. But still, let's see if Chapman can get things going. He gets a lefty 
lefty lefty matchup here against Spencer Horowitz, and there's a fly out into right. And now another lefty lefty matchup in the form of Kavan Biggio, who's 0 for 2 today. And Biggio just gonna hit one softly on the ground to Ellie De La Cruz. Two up, two down for Chapman. Let's see if he can get the righty here in Isaiah Kiner for Leffa. 3 1 offering, he walks him. But again, Chapman will see yet another lefty in the form of Kevin Kiermeyer, and on the 2 2, he got him. 102. The Reds have some serious flamethrowers in this bullpen in the form of Chapman, Miller, and more. As we now go to the top of the eighth, Jamer Candelario still held hitless tonight. And Chris Bassett, okay, before the Spencer Steer Perfect Perfect, has done a real good job limiting the damage of this Reds offense compared to at least what their starter did today. But Steer is on here with a one out double that went perfect perfect into right center. Christian Encarnacion, though, with a horrible swing on an inside sinker. Two down in the inning for Novelli Marte. On the one two, he's too late on a sinker by Bassett. To the bottom of the eighth. TJ Antone is the set man. I won't anticipate a Camilo Doval appearance tonight just because of the lead we have, but still, it's good to get Antone some innings. And Bo Bichette kind of just gets lucky on that hit, extending the bat, pulling it in the left. He's on for leadoff single. Dalton Varsho on the one two. That ball's going to hit him. Oh, the slurve runs in. No outs. Here comes Josh Bell, going to weakly hit one on the ground to Spencer Steer. The only play is at first. Two runners in the scoring position for Alejandro Kirk, the catcher. He'll bounce one to Spencer Steer. Play is made at first base, but the Blue Jays get one back. So here comes George Springer on the 2-2 pitch. He hits one up the middle. Weak contact, but it gets through. And now, don't look now, but it's a three-run game. We'll keep Antone in for Spencer Horowitz. Horowitz up the middle. Another weak hit for the Jays. First and second and two outs, and the tying run is to the plate. And unexpectedly, we have to bring in Camilo Doval. He's not given up a run so far this season. He'll get Kavan Biggio on the 2-2. Got him swinging. Big pitch by Doval on the slider as he looks for a four-out save here tonight in Toronto. Let's see, though, if we can make this not a save situation anymore by getting the man some run support. Ellie De La Cruz flies out into center. Tyler Stevenson takes a bad swing and will ground out to second to Biggio. To gone, we bring in a pinch hitter for Estri Ruiz and Jock Peterson. Again, you know the power he brings. Peterson comes up on a 1-2 pitch against Emi Garcia, and he'll strike out in a sinker. So that'll do it for the top of the ninth. Obviously, Peterson will not stay in the field, so enter Stuart Fairchild. He'll be playing center field for the spot up in the ninth. Here it comes. Isaiah Kiner for left foot first against Dotefall, and the Jays continue to find ways to get hits. Leadoff man aboard, Falefa is on first. Here comes Kevin Kiermeyer on the one, two. That slider stays middle, middle, and that one's ripped into right field. McLean gets it, but runners on second and third for the Blue Jays with no outs. Wait, but oh. Okay, I don't know why Falefa went to home. That makes no sense. The Blue Jays gift us an out. Bo Bichette on the 1-1 one, one pitch, and that would have scored a run. Will they send another runner to the plate? They're not going to test McLean this time. On the corners, one out, tying run to the plate is Dalton Varsho. He stares at strike three on a slider. Doval yet to give up a run in 2025. Can he get Josh Bell to end the game? That one's bobbled by Encarnacion. Bell slow, and CES makes the play to Doval at first. And that's your ball game. I mean, it wasn't without some struggles with both the back end bullpen guys in Antone and Doval, but Camilo Doval continues his streak of not giving up a, a single run so far in 2025, and he slams the door and the Blue Jays picking up his eighth save. When it's all said and done, the Blue Jays actually out hit the Reds 12 to nine because of the damage they were able to do late in this game. And you gotta give credit to Chris, Chris Bassett as well, keeping the score kind of where it was only allowing one run in the second half of this game. The Reds, though, are victorious. They hold on to win by a score of 6-3. to three. So, folks, thank y'all for watching episode number 28 of the Cincinnati Reds franchise mode here on MLB The Show 24. If you haven't yet, though, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for more. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy the video. Good luck, see you for watching. And Mamba, forever.